Hi, everybody. Welcome to the KPRC 2 Sports Podcast. This is Episode 8. As we uh, march on during what's going to be a busy fall season, and it's always a great to talk all things Houston sports, and we are honored to have uh, the CEO of the Houston Harris County Sports Authority, uh, Janice Burke, with us on this week's podcast and coverage on KPRC2 and clicktohouston.com. First off, Janice, thanks for the time. It's always great to see you better in person, but at least we can see each other right now. Good to see you. Yes, yeah, good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Hey, this is, a, I, know you, I know you've done a lot of interviews in the last week or so, and, uh, and for good reason, just all the great work that the, uh, the Houston Harris County Sports Authority has done celebrating 25 years now and um, it's, it's amazing how time flies but uh, it's, a, it's a great celebration for all the great work y'all have done. It really is and when you look back you know it was kind of a tumultuous time in the sports industry in Houston with the Houston Oilers leaving town becoming Tennessee Titans and Everybody's right. scrambling to figure out, can we get stadiums built and keep our other teams? And <laughs> um, and now you fast forward to where we are today. It's it's really a fantastic story. What was it like? Okay, describe now what, for people who don't know your background, you came to Houston in what, was it 04? Is that correct? Uh, 2006. 2006, after, I'm sorry. Yeah, about a year and a half after the Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl that was hosted here. So you knew what, what the, how the city did with that, and uh, you came in, and your first thoughts – uh, as far as a vision, um, did you come in immediately saying, man, we have, a, we have great properties here, great stadiums, there's a lot we can do? I mean, what was the mindset coming in when you, you took over? Yeah, when I first came to Houston and was interviewing, and I flew back and forth several times before I actually took the job, but I thought, what a fantastic opportunity. We have these new stadiums. What other city in America has built three stadiums in that <laughs> short of a period of a time? Um, and just meeting the team owners and the team presidents, um, it was it was just a fantastic experience. And I knew that Houston didn't even know what they had, right? And, right. and back then, 50% of the people weren't sure we should have built the buildings and 50%, <laughs> you know, because they were angry and then thought, okay, the Oilers are gone, let them go. Right. Um, if the other teams want to go, let them go. But 50% said, no, we can't be the, the, you know, third largest county and fourth largest city in America and lose all our pro teams. <clears throat> Amazing. Yeah. And uh, I guess I would imagine early on that did the Astrodome come up and um, obviously with everything that's been going on, it's still a hot topic uh, when you, when you <laughs> yeah. talk used to sports. A lot of people, I don't know what the percentages are, but a lot of people still want to keep it. Some are saying, okay, let's make it into something else. Is that still kind of a hot, hot discussion behind the scenes? Yes, and if you go to a dinner party, you try it sometime, and you, you ask people around the table, it's still 50-50, <laughs> even, <laughs> even in a small group of those that think you should keep it and have great memories and think it's you know the eighth wonder of the world and we have to preserve it, and then the other half will be like, no, that's what museums are for. We should tear it down. So yeah. um, I, you know, luckily, that's not really um, kind of an issue that I have to focus on because it's on county property, and so the county and the, um, the mm -hmm. commissioner's court are trying to deal with it. But I do say to people all the time, the next time we build a new stadium, let's figure out what we're going to do with the old ones first. <laughs> that, that's a good approach to have right there. Um, what, what have been some of the highlights since you came on board? And, and, and then I want to get in a few minutes. People, I think people would be interested in what goes into landing an event. Because I know it's a team effort. A lot of people are involved. But uh, when you look back first, uh, since you arrived, uh, y'all have had so many great events that have come in here through the city, and Houston has no doubt shown uh, that, uh, that we know how to host big events in uh, the world when needed, too. So what, what stands out to you during the last 25 years as some of the, the high points? Yeah, well, you know, back in 2004, of course, we hosted a Super Bowl, but I think when we hosted the next Super Bowl, even NFL will tell you, wow, what a changed city, even the footprint. Because really, the downtown was kind of the rebirth started with the stadiums. And then you had right. the hotels, the convention center hotels added, Discovery Green Park. Yeah, because I wasn't you know, there, right? In, o right, in 04, right. yeah. Yeah, and, and there was, it was, uh, that convention center was surrounded by asphalt parking lots when I first moved here. So mm. it's really, it's really great to see the footprint and how it's evolved. And of course, we've got such a reputation of putting on really good events. 
um, that's not just the sports authority with these big mega events. It's a community effort um, mm -hmm. from the police force to, you know, um, our sign ordinances that city council has passed to volunteers, you know, the Super Bowl 10,000 volunteers. Um, so a lot goes into bidding. Every city wants these big events, of course. So it's a fierce competition behind the scenes that people may not realize. <laughs> but I think um, our city does it well and we've proven ourselves. Yeah, I mean, you look at every event, uh, it seems like Houston is in the running for it, and oftentimes uh, Houston lands these events. And uh, I think people would be interested to hear, and in, I'll just use Super Bowl as an example, but you can dive into any big event. We've we've hosted Final Fours. we got another one coming up. Uh, yeah. Just w what's it take legwork-wise, because it doesn't just happen six months out. I mean, this is a deal, and I know World Cup goes way back, but right. uh, the planning that's involved, uh, the presentation that's involved, you got to sell these people that, hey, the Houston's the, the place to be. But is So two things, what all goes into that, and is it becoming much more of an easier sell because of the track record that Houston has had now in these big events? Well, yeah, certainly Houston has a track record and is internationally known now. We've done enough mm -hmm. world championships and um, all different kinds of events. Uh, we're such a diverse city, so, so no matter what sport we do, even if it's not really a popular U.S. sport, it's popular in, in Houston because of our diverse community and fans that we have. But um, I would say they're all sort of different. Um, you first look at, and you, you have to kind of be strategic. So you first look at, well, who's going to be voting on this? You know, mm -hmm. in some instances, when it's a world championship, every country has a vote. And so then we have to look at, okay, what, what's the message we need to get across so that every country wants to come and feels welcome here? Um, sometimes it's team owners um, in the case with like a Super Bowl um, that they're voting. Um, with the NCAA, it's a basketball committee um, right. that's put together. So um, it's always a little bit different, but I don't think people would realize how many years in advance. So I'll give you college football playoffs, for example, yeah. which we're hosting in 2024. Um, we went after that a couple of times and we're in, you know, from the very first one that they ever did. Mm -hmm. And um, and finally, our strategy was let's bring them to town. So we brought in the decision makers when we were hosting a Final Four. And then the next year, we brought them back when we were hosting a Super Bowl and said, we just want you to come be our guests. Right. Look at the footprint. Look at how our fans react and, and just look at the flow and, and how the teams get to the get to the stadium and mm -hmm. so anyway they experienced it came back to us and said you know what we're gonna not do put this out to bid we want to give houston the opportunity we're gonna do a closed door behind the scenes one-on-one -on -one negotiation if we can get there great if we can't then we'll go out to bid mm -hmm. so sometimes um that's the case uh, as well so it just uh, really depends on the on the group that we're bidding for so this is going to be uh on the the cfp this is going to be the Y'all have landed it now for 24, but y'all had two previous tries. It just didn't work out, and this is the one that did. So right. you got, you got right. to be so persistent, Dallas, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Dallas hosted the very first one, and, right. and we were in the mix. Um, and, of course, no one knew how that first one was going to go or, you know, uh, we weren't sure could we make the budget work because a lot of times when it's right. a first, you're also trying to balance that budget. Um, so that you can make make sure that you can put the event on successfully. That's that's awesome, and uh, I'm, I'm sure similar stories with the likes of the Super Bowl. And you mentioned you're dealing with owners; you got to get the the right vote. I want to ask you: uh, We've hosted what two since your during your tenure? Uh, we've had see so you got an 06, so we had the 04 one, right? And then, um, yep. Yeah, so we've had two Super Bowls in Houston, not during my tenure, one during my tenure. And Greg Grissom, the president of the Texans, and I were just talking about what's that next year that we should bid. And yeah. we've already put our name in for future years that we'd like to look at. Good. I was going to ask you what, uh, you know, when, when you do that, obviously the, the results were, were, were well uh, accepted and well received when, when Houston hosted the, the job you guys did and the city did. Um, when you see the competition, obviously you wouldn't go after it unless you felt like you could land something. I would imagine that's the approach going in. Uh, but the competition continues to, to improve out there when the cities have built new stadiums, so on and so forth. What's the selling point to get yet another one, do you think, here in Houston down the road? 
Yeah, I think we can never sit back and just rest on our laurels. We always have to be reinventing ourselves and and what mm -hmm. how are we going to put Houston's fingerprint on it, right? Sometimes the legacies that we come up with in Houston live live far beyond the year that we host. Right. An example of that is the the um, men's final four that we'll be hosting next year. We started the read to the final four program, which is, mm -hmm. you know, all the kids that log in and um, you do the bracket that follows along with the March Madness um, right. bracket. And, and, and then you finally get down to the, the final four schools that have logged the most, you know, reading um, minutes um, that the kids have put in. And then finally, you know, school wins, but that started in Houston. And then every city was required to do it um, going forward. And now it's come back to us and we're like, wow, this program has really grown. We need a full time person working on this. There you go. Um, so so then, you know, what's the next thing that we want to put our fingerprint on or, or add to the event to enhance it? Yeah, well, and I guess that's uh, what the team's working on now. So. Right. As we wrap it up here, you got, uh, you know, World Cup on the down the road. And I mean, put that in just if you can, just for folks that that don't know how big a deal this is in so many areas, landing, uh, becoming a World Cup host city, what's, the, what's that going to mean big picture for Houston? I mean, if you look at the Super Bowl, a one-time event, a week worth of activities, you know, estimated around $350 million of economic impact to the city. Wow. And you take this um, and it's five or six matches that last for 35 days. Um, you can do the math. It's it's huge for our city. And um, yeah. world's largest sporting event coming to Houston. How great is that? Um, I think we've proven ourselves. We've earned it. We've worked really hard for that win. We weren't even at the table in 90 when when it was yeah. uh, hosted last time so that, that's awesome well, i know a lot of people can't wait for that i know you and your team chris Kennedy, and everybody involved uh, a lot of work to do i know but uh, the countdown is on certainly to 2026 well i know it's been a fantastic 25 years i know it's worth celebrating and uh, i know part of your team i think somebody's throwing out the first pitch at a baseball game and really yeah. wrecking get the recognition that y'all deserve and uh, i know the city is proud of all these great events that have come to uh, to h-town and uh, I appreciate all you and all your team and the great work with the uh, Houston Harris County Sports Authority. So keep it up and congratulations, 25 years. That's a great milestone, and I know you all have uh, bigger and better things uh, uh, lying ahead for our city. Yeah, I can't wait for the next 25. Thanks so much, Randy. <laughs> you bet. Janice, great to see you. Look forward to uh, run, crossing paths with you down the road as we get ready for some of these big events. Thanks for hanging out with us today on the podcast. Sure. All right, that is Houston Harris County Sports Authority uh, CEO Janice Burke. Janice, again, thanks for the time. And again, big events coming up. You got the Final Four here in Houston uh, in the spring. Down the road, we've got uh, potentially a Super Bowl if they bid for that. And of course, 2026, the uh, World Cup coming to Houston. So that's a look at our uh, podcast for today, episode eight. Thanks for hanging out with us here. We'll do it weekly here on KPRC2. I'm Sports Director Randy McAvoy. We will talk to you next week.